Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today in this session. So today in this session, we are going to begin the C project called Axi AgV. So firstly, we need to understand what Axi is. Axi simply stands for argument count. And what does this argument count do? It stores the number of argument that is passed on your command line. For instance, if on my terminal, if I should say, how are you, right? So I have how as one argument, R as another argument, and you as another argument. So how many arguments? Three arguments. So Axi will store three. This means that I passed in three arguments on my command line. Do you get it? While AgV here stands for argument vector, and the work of AgV is simply to store these arguments that are passed on the command line. So in this case, AgV is going to store how are you. AgC stores the number of argument passed, which in this case is three, while AgV stores the exact argument. Okay, so this AgV here is an array of characters. It takes in a pointer to a character. So it's only storing what characters, right? So since it is an array of characters, we know that arrays are indexed, right? We start from index zero, index one, index two, right? So they are stored in indexed format. So here, this how here will be stored at what? At index one of AgV. Why not index zero? Because this is the first argument. So why won't it be stored index zero? Instead, it will be stored in index one because index zero contains the program name itself. We are going to see that, okay? Index zero contains the program name itself. So always the index zero of AgV will be the program name in which you are compiling from. Do you get it? So this how here will now be stored in what? In index one of AgV. A in index 2, U in index 3. Okay? So this is how it will go. So always, always, at V index 0 is holding what? The program name. Always. All the time. Whenever you're trying to access whatever is in index 0 of at V, you will get the program name printed. We are going to see that, okay? So I'm just trying to give you an insight of what at C at V is. I believe this is clear. Right. So don't forget, just read this document here. These materials here, they are very important. So let's move on to soft task. In this case, we are not writing functions. So we have nothing to do with main.h. We are just going to write a C program here. So before we continue, let me quickly pass this information. For those interested in our C mentorship program, the course application for the seventh batch is currently open. So kindly go to bitwebland com.ng which is our newly launched learning management system and then go to courses under courses you'll be able to see alx complete c programming course so because i'm already logged in that's why i'm seeing continue learning here in your own case you will see start learning okay so if i click on continue learning now so as you can see i have the project here these are the first ones created how to clear repositories Hello world, how to install Betty, all this. These are all the ALX project, as you can see here. We have them on this website. Okay, so for instance, if I want to access this small functions, more nested loops, I will just click on this. And as you can see, all the materials are here. Okay, so here as well, if I want to access functions and nested loops, all the course materials are here. So if you're really interested in taking part in this mentorship program, kindly message me using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video and then I will share a coupon code which will give you a 30% discount on this course. Believe me, this course is very affordable, okay? Also, if you have a course that you want to sell on this website, you can register as an instructor. Simply come here and then you can click on instructor registration. You can register as an instructor because I've already registered. That's why you're seeing you are not registered as an instructor. In your own case, you'll see a registration form which you need to fill. Okay, so after filling the registration form and after uploading your course, the course will be reviewed. And once everything is fine, we are going to make it available for others to have access to. Okay, so if there is any inquiry you want about being an instructor or enrolling in the C programming course, kindly message me, like I said, using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video, and I will answer your question. And also, I will share the coupon code that you need to get 30% discount on our mentorship program. So thank you very much, and let's continue. All right, so let me copy this. As you can see, I'm already in my repository, 0 by 0 a Did you see that? Yeah. Um, axi agv so let me open the file so paste so i need to include stdio.h right so we need to know where 
this axis at v are placed right so this axis at v are placed in our main function do we get it axis at v are placed in our main function let me do it i will document it later on let's just do this here all right so we always password void to our main function isn't it we always pass void and this void simply means that the main function is not taking any argument so axi and v are the argument that the main function can take so if we want our main function to be able to take argument this is where we pass in axi and v so axi is what storing an integer and it is also returning an integer right? the data type is an integer right so i just say int axi right comma and then what again since v is a pointer to a character so it's going to be asterisk v. then you do this so this is simply how to pass in the command line argument axi v. these are stored in where in your main function sorry these are passed as parameters in your main function so this is going to take to, to keep count of the number of argument while this is going to store the argument itself right so now let's document but i just wanted to show you where to place this command line argument so we have main so what does this question says we should write a program that prints its name so i'll just say print program name all right print program name and then what again we need to explain axi and v, right so i'll just say at axi i'll just say argument count right and i'll say at v i'll say this is argument argument vector right i've already explained this okay i think then the next thing is the return so i just say return return zero i think that's all so here this question says we should write a program that prints its name followed by a new line and if you can remember i've explained this very clearly for you that the 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 program name is stored in which index in index zero of v, right so it means that we are trying to print what is index zero of v. just look at this you know this is an array this shows that this is an array so we are trying to print what is stored in its index zero do you get it so it says if you rename the program it will print the new name without having to compile again you should remove the part you should not remove the part before the program name so all i want here is i just want to print whatever is in index zero of v because like i said the program name is always in the index zero of v so all i need to do is i'll just say printf here so printf i'm printing what program name so it is in string format right percentage n so i'll just say v in what index index zero so i'm printing what is in index zero of v right so here I will just say return zero, right? So we are done with this, right? So let's run Betty on this. So Betty is fine. So let's try compiling. If I try to compile this, I'm definitely going to get an error. Did you see that? I got an error. It says error on used parameter axi. So we have axi stated here right we have it here axi but we've not used it throughout the function so this brings us to how we can be able to compile our program without actually using any variable we declared or any function parameter so here i'm not using what axi so there are two ways i can do this it means that during the compilation it will not have problem even if i use axi within my function or not so there are two ways to do this the first way is i would say since i'm not using axi right i'll just say I'll open a bracket and I'll pass in void. And in beside the void, no equalities and nothing. So just pass in the argument that you won't be using within the function. So now I have this void axi. So it means that this axi here, I'm not going to use it within the function. So it is void. So now this will be compiled. So if I should say GCC, did you see that? It has been compiled. So let's run the file. If I should say my. So did you see? I got my name my name is that's the file name here did you see that this is the file name right this is the file name so as i run the program it prints the file name because it is the first argument now it is what it is the first argument to the function and it is the file name so that's why i'm having my name is because i said i'm printing what is in index zero so let's see 
another way of using um of making our compiler to ignore any parameter that we've not used so this is one of the way like i said there is another way in which we can do this the other way in which we can do this is done inside the argument so here i don't want to use axi right i don't want to use axi so i can simply put something like this inside the argument so i will just say here i will just type in underscore and then i'll pass in attribute attribute right take note of what i'm doing after the data type you pass in two underscore attribute and another underscore two underscore do you get it and then in bracket you pass in on used here that's all do you get it that's all what you need to do here so this will also compile without prompting any error that we've not used at v sorry at c so let's see let's compile did you see that let's run it did you see that we got the same output so this is another way but if you look at this the first method looks easier right the first method looks easier you just type in void and then that's all here right so you just say void and then i'll just say axi that's all so this looks more easier but each and every one of them has their own advantage you can just dig on that later okay all right so now let's try to rename our file here let's rename it so let's rename so this is the command we are name renaming my name is to what my new name is right so if i press enter it has been renamed so let's run our program again to see if this will work whoa oh sorry we are not supposed to pass this we are supposed to pass in the new file name so it's going to be my new name is yeah i think that's the new file name right so let's run it did you see that we got the new name printed right we got the new name printed so it means that our program now is able to print what the file name in which it is being compiled from so this is simply how to do this thing okay so don't forget to add commit and push to a github and then you can run your checks so we are going to stop here in the next video i are going to continue from task one of this project so thank you very much to meet in our next session